So uh, today we'll be discussing about what is palliative care. We have with us Dr. Dam and Mr. Menon. Dr. Dam, mm -hmm. what exactly is palliative care if you want to explain to a layman? Well, uh, pallium basically comes from the Latin word uh, which means a cloak. Like, uh, uh, as you say in Hindi, like a mother takes her child in her arms. Right? The way a mother embraces the child in her, in her own arms or in, in her own sari in the Indian con uh, context. So the child feels very safe out there in the mother's lap, in the, in the mother's arms, in the as the mother hugs the child, the child is cocooned in a state of bliss and safety. So palliative care does exactly that. So palliative care here provides care to a patient and not only to the patient but also to the family because the family is also suffering to an equal maybe even more than the patient is suffering. So palliative care is there as a supportive measure and you know guiding the patient and the family members through that terrible course of terminality and it continues even after the patient dies pro by providing bereavement care to the family members by telling them that whatever you did was so good so very special and nobody could have done it better than you so these things go a long way in you know restoring the uh, uh, morale of the patient's family and uh, they feel good about it. So this isn't just about what palliative care is, by basically cocooning the patient in a supportive care to help improve the quality of life which the patient has. Whatever little uh, longevity the patient has, it is more focused on the quality of life. It is not focused on the quantity. We are not bothered whether my patient is going to survive for uh, one year or ten years. Even if the patient survives for one day, our focus is to make that one day very special and very nice for the patient and for the family. Thank you, Dr. Dam. And uh, Mr. Menon, can you just uh, throw some light on the national scenario, what is happening in palliative care across the country? You see, palliative care is uh, functioning in a variety of settings. That is the Indian scenario, uh, especially in big hospitals, there are departments functioning in palliative care. In certain big hospitals, some uh, palliative care NGOs are functioning under the taking into account, I mean, uh, making use of all the infrastructural facilities of the hospital. So there are certain NGOs which are working as uh, charitable societies and trust separately in their own buildings and they are in their own infrastructural facilities. There are certain charitable societies uh, which are functioning only home care services. Home care is considered to be the atma of palliative care because uh, once a patient is found uh, having an irreversible uh, nature of disease, uh, he has to um, be consulted in a hospital maybe far away from his place of uh, stay. So this home care service is a good answer to avoid such uh, uh, issues connected with the transportation of the patient, the financial uh, what you call implication that uh, the patient is um, likely to incur, uh, the inconvenience of the bystanders or the carers or the family members who may be the breadwinners or the you know the family will have to take leave and uh, all those you know social uh, restrictions or barriers will be there. So, suppose if a, uh, if, if a palliative care service provider is going to the um, uh, place where the patient is staying, naturally much of such difficulties uh, we can uh, reduce to the maximum. That is another, uh, you know, uh, type of uh, palliative care that is functioning across the country. The next one is uh, some um, uh, organizations are having only you know, uh, two hour, three hour consultations in a particular locality. So um, these are all, uh, most of the um, um, 
occasions these uh, palliative care centers are functioning in, in 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 the town or the city or the the metro areas so our intention is to spread uh, this type of you know delivery in the rural population because in the indian scenario more than 70% of the total population stay in rural areas so only palliative care for about 1% to 2% is being delivered at the present uh, national scenario when we take it in that account only 1 or 2% of the total patient patients who may be needing palliative care receiving palliative care so uh, napcam national association of palliative care for uh, ayush and integrative medicine e, the main objective of the organization is to reach out to the rural population who may be waiting for palliative care intervention that is the ultimate goal ultimate aim that we focus on so within the next 5 uh, years or so we hope that we will be able to achieve uh, this target through our organizational members through our chapters that's what i propose to give you as an answer uh, many other uh, areas we will have to touch upon during the course of the uh, discussions and i hope that many of the questions can be covered during our you know thank you mr menon so basically what i understand is uh, when you are talking about that 1 or 2% of the patients are receiving palliative care so these 1 and 2% geographically they are mostly from kerala and other states states are basically lacking such a facility uh, maybe true in a way because uh, this relates to the uh, you know there is an indpsa uh, narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance act so it relates to that so morphine is a medicine uh, that is being used for you know uh, relieving pain that is a basic thing on which uh, that 1% 2% is taken so when we have a national statistics of the delivery i mean a uh, usage of uh, morphine it says that only 1% of the total population in india is receiving this morphine uh, maybe because in the state of kerala we have got a liberalized uh, you know ndps act there we have formed a very good uh, you know effective rules in, under the narcotic and uh, psychotropic substance act and we do not find any difficulty in getting uh, morphine for delivery in palliative care so so Uh, when we take in a, in a state wise perspective kerala still will be getting uh, more uh, percentage but when we take it as a national uh, you know scenario only uh, 1 or 2% of the total population maybe because of the non availability of the most important drug that is morphine that is to it's a pain killer so uh, the availability is restricted in other parts of the country though there is a national ndps act is a national uh, act and uh, there are rules to be framed in different states and many states do not find uh, you know uh, it appropriate to implement it through the legislation of these rules that may thank be you. the reason thank you as far as i know that uh, ndps act has been amended in 2014 uh, all the states have to simply follow the act in spite of the best of efforts if we talk about the best of hospitals even government hospitals they are not having oral morphine which is the gold standard as per world health organization when we come to management of cancer pain so availability of oral morphine again is a big question and with this i have the next question to dr abhijit uh, dr sir uh, what what is basically holistic care so can you throw some light on this so to explain holistic care in a better fashion uh, suppose we focus uh, on a lady who say who is about 40 years of age who is otherwise a very beautiful lady and she is suddenly diagnosed with breast cancer now her breast one of her breast has to be removed right so after the breast is removed she is in pain so can only morphine relieve her pain try to focus on what that what must be going on through the mind of that lady yesterday she was beautiful and today suddenly there is a loss of body image a loss of her feminine values a sort of shame a sort of rejection by some part of the society so 
her pain is of a holistic nature it is not only a physical pain because physical pain just constitutes 25% only 25% of the whole pain and we were talking about morphine it's my own perspective it's my own perspective that just by defining the use of morphine it is illogical to define palliative care because palliative care is not all about morphine palliative care is all about holism if you just focus on morphine you are just focusing on the physical aspect the physical body doesn't suffer it is the person who suffers and the person is not only the physical body the person is made of emotions that is the psychology it's made of certain religious and spiritual values which make a person the social and cultural factors which shape a person these constitute 75% of the whole load and sadly we are only focused on that 25 25% which is just the physical part so through the national association of palliative care for ayush and integrative medicine so that is why we talk of integration we look forward to change these view points and to help in integration focus on the spiritual cultural social aspects which make up an individual treat the individual as a human being and then you address the pain and that friends is the concept of holism thank you dr dam and uh, uh mr menon uh, would you just uh, sketch out anything uh, about the global scenario in palliative care you see the modern hospice uh, and palliative care movement uh, started with uh, uh, started in uk um, if you take the latest history before that also there were uh, similar um, what do you call institutions where you know different types of palliative care was functioning but uh, when we take up the modern uh, palliative care movement uh, we always um, um, focus or give importance to the st christopher's hospice in uh, london uh, so that is the first uh, you know modern uh, medical um, in a system or a modern um, palliative care system came into being with the dame cecily saunters is considered to be the uh, founder of a modern uh, system of uh, palliative care and uh, hospice movement so Uh, after that uh, we have uh, uh, we have been able to uh, introduce it in other countries and when we take the case of india uh, in the 1980s uh, sri uh, shanti avedana ashram in mumbai uh, is considered to be the first uh, uh, you know organization which took up uh, palliative care for the uh, benefit of those who are uh, having uh, distressing and uh, you know distressing uh, pain in their um, non uh, irreversible uh, diseases so that is the uh, first uh, place where india and um, um, one jilly burn she is a sister uh, sister or a nurse and uh, she is the first person who came to india in mumbai uh, back in the 1980s and uh, established uh, palliative care center in sri shanti avedana ashram after that when we take the case of kerala uh, in 1994 uh, this first palliative care center was established in the code code uh, you know pain and palliative care society so this is the uh, gradual you know um, introduction of palliative care into our area dr nam uh, would you like to add on something yeah if you focus back on our culture also if you go back to the history go back through the history of india it is uh, emperor ashoka uh, who uh, during his battles after the battle after sundown the battle used to be stopped and all the sick soldiers or the wounded soldiers the dying soldiers they were given humanitarian care they and there there used to be certain places where such soldiers used to be nursed and taken care of these were the early beginnings although the term palliative care was not used but then the concept was the same they used to be given that sort of care and even when people used to go on long pilgrimages there used to be certain inns like in uh, ireland the irish uh, nuns of charity uh, they had also the same system where pilgrimages when they used to go 
pilgrims when they used to go on long pilgrimages many the many of the old and elderly and infirmed people would fall ill and they used to stay in uh, roadside inns and these inns became the future hospices so uh, the culture of hospice although the term palliative care and hospice was not used at that time but that culture uh, is deeply rooted in most of the cultures across the world so it's not a new concept actually it's a very old concept which has been given a new flavor and definitely this new flavor is was very much uh, needed to bring the movement forward uh rightly said dr dam thank you uh we have a lot of ashrams where the people prefer to go in their last times and die over there and such ashrams are also in varanasi i, I suppose yeah, exactly, they are there exactly so uh, we are in our history we are already practicing some portion of palliative care and uh, to sum up palliative care as dr dam explained beautifully it is a holistic approach the physical component is there the psychological component is there there may be social components also and apart from all last but not the least a spiritual component is something which is very important for a peaceful death for reduction of not only the physical pain but the mental pain and the trauma which a person undergoes thank you Have a great day